Greetings, people of the internet. You join me without a beard this week. I look weird. But yes, I shaved it off because at the moment I'm trying to find a job so I can buy more pot. So yeah, this week I decided to do something that makes even less sense than Magical Mystery Tour. You may be surprised, shocked, and even call me crazy. So this is my take on winning the They're out. They're all about. They're far. They're near. They're gone. They're here. They're quick and slick. They're insincere. Beware. Now, Winnie the Pooh is friggin' awesome. I don't care if you say, but it's so bloody nice, and safe, and cute, and adorable. It makes me feel weird, and warm, and cuddly inside. I mean, it's like a televisual hug. It's so creepy. And you don't like that? No, it scares me. There must be something wrong with it. And since my whole deal is working out subtext, it's quite perfect for my show. But alas, there is no subtext in anything Winnie the Pooh. It's completely nice and safe and awesome. Even when it makes no sense and has heffalumps and, like, dancing multicoloured heffalumps and... I've no idea what the fuck's going on here. So, all there really is to do for me that's Winnie the Pooh related is take the Russian version of Winnie the Pooh made in the 60s and completely take it out of context and make some bullshit that I think is happening in it. It's a compilation of shorts made between 1969 and 1972, and believe me, the differences between the US version and the Soviet versions are tenfold. You know how US networks remake shows for their own audiences rather than just dub it or subtitle it? They did that with Winnie the Pooh in Soviet Russia, probably because Life Behind the Iron Curtain was so different that it might not have worked in their context. Yes, because Winnie the Pooh has always stood for peace, capitalism and democracy. God bless America! The only version I could find was unsubtitled in its original Russian soundtrack, so I'm probably just going to have to see if I can make heads or tails of it as I go along. The first one, called Vini Pook, starts out with the most childlike and innocuous music you've ever heard in your life. I'm really scared. I mean, it's good, but it's no... Fuck yes! Okay, so we introduce Winnie the Pooh, who sings a song and walks through the Hundred Acre Woods, scaring the animals, guessing he has a rumbly tumbly. And he hears a tree buzzing, there must be honey inside, and he climbs up the tree. He keeps telling us what he's doing. I'm guessing he's telling us what he's doing. He could be talking about anything, really. Anyway, he falls out of the tree and meets with Piglet and wants a balloon to go get the honey from the top of the tree. And Piglet brings out... What the fuck are those things? They look like fucking glowing lobster testicles or some shit. Songs really aren't as catchy, are they? Fuck yeah! Anyway, then Pooh goes to the tar pits and he looks like he gets possessed or something. I think there's a level of this story that I'm really not getting. Maybe the translator confused a copy of Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne with a copy of William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist. Your mother sucks cocks in hell. Um, anyway, so Pooh floats up the tree on the balloon and... Oh god, something horrible's gonna happen, isn't it? I have that horrible sense of foreboding. Not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Anyway, then Piglet gets a rocket launcher. A rocket launcher! Overreaction much? You're you're a fucking Piglet. You shouldn't be playing with rocket launchers. Anyway, he shoots Pooh down from the balloon and the blood and the screaming and the death and decay. Anyway, Pooh falls to earth and isn't exploded, apparently, but he looks extremely traumatised by being shot in the arse with a rocket launcher. Or he's now a zombie or something. Anyway, Pooh does the dance of the dead as that seriously creepy music comes back. And Winnie takes Piglet away onto the horizon to the place where the dead roam, free to feast on the living. I assume. What the hell was that? Thank you, obvious reference joke deciding clip, man. Anyway, then we move on to the next short, and you may be interested to know that the opening music is slightly less spine-chillingly creepy this time.
Anyway, it's morning in the Hundred Acre Wood, and Pooh still has that dead-eyed stare. I think he may still be a zombie, or he might be alive again. I don't really know what happened between movies. And Piglet has dead eyes too. Jesus fuck, what the hell did I stumble across here? A remake of Dawn of the Dead? Anyway, so Pooh Bear and Piglet go to Rabbit's Warren, and Rabbit strangely looks like one of the chipmunks. And we get a bit where Rabbit is up there and Pooh doesn't realise and blah 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 blah. And they go inside the house and Pooh asks Rabbit why his house is a drawing. Anyway, so Pooh and Piglet seem really scared as Rabbit slips the poison into their meals, and this really creepy music starts. Oh god, sense of foreboding. Something horrible's gonna happen again, isn't it? Anyway, they get up to leave, but they can't, and Rabbit keeps feeding them honey, and the loop repeats itself, and it goes round and round forever and ever, and Pooh is trapped eating honey until he explodes, and the blood, it goes everywhere, the blood and the screaming and the death. But Pooh comes back to life after the explosion and says sorry to Rabbit, and he goes off into the horizon, into the dead realm once more as the creepy music plays again. Um, next film. The third one starts with Smooth Jazz. Okay, 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 bit better, more kid friendly at least. Maybe this one won't be as creepy. But then as the music starts, there's all sad music and everyone's crying. Oh god, not Eeyore. No, it's bad enough with Pooh. Don't make Eeyore creepy, please. Um, so Eeyore talks and Pooh comes along and Pooh realises that Eeyore's tail's missing. That's so cute. Anyway, like in the book, Eeyore tells us how it's his birthday and no one cares and... God, he's so sad! Don't cry, Eeyore! Please don't cry! And Pooh and Piglet go get presents for Eeyore! And... Please stop singing Pooh! Please! Please stop singing Pooh! Please stop singing now! Please stop singing! Stop singing now, you stupid fucking bear! Anyway, Pooh comes across a creepy house with a doorbell. I know what this is. It's a gateway to hell. But no, it's Owl's house, and we get the the tail is my bell rope routine. But in Russian, and with some staggeringly creepy voice and animation work. Anyway, Piglet is running to give Eeyore his present when the balloon explodes! So massive and loud, balloons are not grenades! But then again, this was made behind the Iron Curtain, in Soviet Russia, where balloon blows up you. And Piglet cries for his mummy as it's gone, and it's so fucking sad! And back with Owl and Pooh, Owl appears to be pissed and very interested in the label on the honey jar. Anyway, Owl gets pissed off for some reason and says, You don't know me, man, you fucking honey-eating bear, you don't know me. This is this Jars, he's fucking cool and he knows me. Anyway, so they give Eeyore the busted balloon and the honey and Eeyore dips the broken balloon in and out, chanting a spell to bring forth... Demon! Demon bird! Demon! Um, no, I think it's just Owl in the hat. Oh, oh, it's just Owl in the hat, sorry. Um, uh, he says things. Anyway, then they realise that the tail was the bell rope and they laugh and they keep laughing. Because they're under the spell as the demons from the honey pot arise and possess them, and they sing and dance until the screen explodes backwards. Okay, I really don't know what to think. On one level, it seems to be faithful to the spirit of the book. Sorta. In the same way that Cannibal Holocaust is an adaptation of the very hungry caterpillar. But, you know, you got Pooh and Rabbit and Owl and the bell rope stuff, but it's so Staggeringly creepy. Not just the whole explosions and blood and death and zombism, but the music and the atmosphere. Granted, you've got to allow for cultural differences, but you could say the same thing about a Serbian film. It's just not cute enough, really. Um. Anyway, I'm the Herbal Crackpot. I'm gonna go do something manly now. Where the fuck's my knitting gone?